Watching Formula One drivers might seem easy from the outside, but that's because these are the absolute best in the world, making it look effortless. The truth is, driving a modern F1 car is anything but easy. With no traction control or anti-lock brakes, handling these machines requires expert precision. Plus, the intense G-forces experienced during turns would leave most people feeling dizzy and disoriented. Are F1 cars difficult to drive? Ever wondered if driving an F1 car is as tough as it looks? Well, buckle up because it's a wild ride. While we marvel at the smooth maneuvers of F1 drivers on TV, the truth is, piloting these beasts takes a whole new level of skill. These drivers aren't just good, they are truly some of the best in the world. We've seen drivers, even those known to be skilled and experienced when driving fast around a track, struggle to keep Formula One cars under control. Take Top Gear's Richard Hammond's adventure with Fernando Alonso's championship-winning Renault R25, for example. Despite his track experience, Hammond struggled to keep the Renault on track. When Hammond got the car going, he was driving too slowly, so he was unable to keep the car's tires warm enough to get enough grip on the track. He was also struggling physically, the G-forces pushing his limits. It was far from a leisurely spin around the block. Speed the first aspect of these cars that makes them so difficult to drive is the sheer speed that they are capable of. Formula One cars can hit speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour, but it's not the speed on the straights that are the problem. It's the corners where things really get hair-raising. Formula One cars aren't just fast, they redefine the term speed demons. They take corners like nothing else on Earth. Formula One cars have so much downforce that they corner at incredibly high speeds sometimes at a mind-bending 190 miles per hour, with downforce pushing you to the limit. In the heat of the moment, there's no time for second-guessing. Drivers rely purely on instinct and skills. It's not about thinking, it's about feeling the car and reacting in the blink of an eye. These machines pack a punch with a whopping 1,000 horsepower under the hood, all at the mercy of the driver's right foot. Forget traction control. One wrong move could cause the wheels to spin and send the car off the track. Handling. Ever tried to wrap your head around how Formula One cars handle? It's a whole different bull game compared to your average ride. See, your everyday road cars use mostly mechanical grip rather than aerodynamics, which means that even if they are traveling at slower speeds, they can still handle well, perfect for navigating city streets. But F1 cars, they're a whole different breed. Forget about mechanical grip. These bad boys thrive on aerodynamics, courtesy of their fancy floors and wings, including those slick venturi tunnels. The very same elements that make them incredibly fast in faster corners. In order for the aerodynamics to work properly, the driver needs to drive their car fast. Here's the kicker. To unlock the full potential of those aerodynamics, drivers need to unleash the beast and hit some serious speeds. You heard that right? The faster they go, the tighter those corners become. So, imagine the pressure on an F1 driver's shoulders. They've got to not just keep up the pace, but push it to the limit, all while making sure those tires stay toasty and grippy. Slow down, and suddenly, it's like trying to steer a sled on ice. Lack of driver aids. For years, Formula One relied on driver aids like traction control and anti-lock brakes to keep the cars in line. These aids, however, have now been removed in order to make the cars more difficult to drive and to create more of a challenge for the drivers. Take anti-lock brakes, or ABS for short, for instance. This nifty system used to step in when a driver applied too much pressure, preventing the brakes from locking up and losing grip. Now it's all on the driver's shoulders. Then there's traction control. Think of it as ABS for the throttle. It used to be the safety net when a driver got a little too throttle happy, modulating the power to prevent wheels from spinning out of control. With these aids out of the equation, F1 drivers have to tread carefully, especially at the start of the race or when navigating those hair-raising corners. G-forces. The G-forces that drivers need to endure are one of the elements that make Formula One one of the most physically draining sports on the planet. Drivers sometimes pull just over 5G, which is close to what fighter pilots experience on a regular basis. Picture this, pulling over five Gs, which is like having five times your body weight bearing down on you. That's right, it's like having an extra heavyweight champion sitting on your shoulders while you're zooming around the track. 
That's why F1 drivers are like neck muscle warriors. The average person's head weighs 11 pounds, and a helmet weighs around 3 pounds. This means when cornering at 5 Gs, the driver's head will technically weigh 70 pounds, pulling their head to the opposite side. But here's the kicker. There's no timeout. Drivers have to tough it out for the entire race. Ever notice drivers resting their heads against the headrest on straights? That's not just for show. It's a brief respite for those weary neck muscles. Something unique to Formula One. Formula One cars aren't just high-speed marvels. They're delicate beasts that demand a delicate touch. What sets them apart? It's their sensitivity, a trait that adds a whole new layer of challenge for drivers. Imagine this. Every component of an F1 car, from the engine to the tires to the brakes, operates within a razor-thin window of perfection. In order to get them into that functioning window, you need to drive faster. Let's talk tires. Cold rubber might as well be ice on the track. Until those babies hit the right temperature, it's like trying to navigate a slip and slide. The cars depend on tire temperatures, and if they are too cold, the car will simply slide off the track. And don't even get me started on brakes. F1 cars use the creme de la creme of braking systems, but here's the catch. They need a good dose of heat before they'll even think about slowing down. Cold brakes will simply lock the wheels, and the car will not slow down in time for the upcoming corner. What does driving an F1 car feel like? Stepping into the cockpit of an F1 car isn't just a drive, it's a whole new dimension of sensation. Firstly, you sit much lower to the ground. You sit so low to the ground that you can feel every little bump in the tarmac. Forget sitting upright like in your average sedan. In an F1 car, you're reclined, legs raised, like you're settling into a futuristic pod. Your feet hover over the pedals, perfectly positioned for precision control. But don't think for a second, you're loose in there. Oh no, you're snug as a bug, molded into your seat with a six-point harness that might as well be super glue. It's not just for comfort, it's for safety too, keeping you rock steady under those bone-rattling G-forces, even in the worst case scenario. The hardest part of driving an F1 car. Driving a Formula One car, it's a test of physical and mental endurance like no other. While handling and speed are daunting enough, it's the relentless G-forces that truly push drivers to their limits. In an F1 car, every movement feels like a battle against gravity itself. Many drivers have described the G-forces as trying to pull them out of the car. Some drivers have even said that there are some corners where they just need to hang on to try and keep the car on the track. But it's not just the corners that pack a punch. Even braking feels like a feat of strength. With drivers enduring up to 5 Gs as they decelerate from breakneck speeds, Faces contort, necks strain. It's like trying to keep your head on straight as the world spins around you. The average person would not be able to keep their head upright when the car decelerates from 200 miles per hour down to 60 miles per hour for a corner. Do you have to be fit to drive an F1 car? The conditions in the cockpit can become quite uncomfortable, and the G-forces you feel require a lot of core and neck strength to withstand. And make no mistake, these drivers are the epitome of fitness. If they're not at the track, they're often spending time in the gym or doing some form of physical activity to keep fit. Many drivers have completed marathons and Ironman events in their spare time, which shows just how in shape they are. Step inside the cockpit and you'll find yourself in a pressure cooker. A Formula One car can reach up to 120 degrees on an average day. Drivers are also wearing fireproof race suits. The result of this is that drivers can lose between 4 and 8 pounds of body weight during the course of a two-hour race. The exhaustion is real. Watch as drivers stumble out of their cars, drenched in sweat and drained of energy. It's a reminder that behind every victory lies a battle fought and won through sheer determination and unwavering strength.